What's going on, everybody? This is Jay Ghost, and I wanted to sit here and talk about the recent DMCA hearing that went on, say, Friday of last week, or Wednesday of last week. It's been a little bit of a time that I was not going to be covering this because I wanted to make sure that I got all my ducks lined up in a row, talking about the five myths that have been going on with the DMCA hearing, what happened during the hearing, and event, essentially what was um, going on with this. Now, in terms of the myths, um, what a lot of people don't really know or understand is that the DMCA takedown was basically being used a lot. The reason being um, the motion picture industry has not stopped piracy, but they still continue to complain about it. Now, as I've said in another video, they made $10.9 billion last year. In 2013, they made $10.9 billion. But they say that is not enough, and they want to make a lot more money based on DMCA takedowns, which, for all intents and purposes, they want to sit here and control where and when their products are used. And more than likely, with these takedowns going on, there's going to be a lot of free speech being censored because copyright law for those that really don't know what it's about it's supposed to be about promoting the progress of the arts and sciences or in other words allowing for newer material to come in but with the content id system as well as everything that's going wrong with copyright in terms of censoring people and preventing new forms of media material to be allowed to be used copyright as a bargaining tool has basically been destroyed copyright for all intents and purposes is not something that can help out most of the people now what happened before was a um, guesstimation that no one anticipated so many dmc takedowns basically we have filters because there's a lot of whack-a-mole going on um, with any system, the MPAA, the Hollywood, um, the recording industry, they have a lot of power to censor the internet in a lot by doing a lot of takedowns, unlimited takedowns, which for all intents and purposes, Google, with their $50 million or $60 million content ID system, has been trying to keep up with, but ever since SOPA passed, the DMCA's have been only increasing a lot more. Now, what was supposed to be happening is that Hollywood in section 512M, part one of the DMCA, you're supposed to continue to enforce those rights, but it's not for us, for we the people to sit here and decide. It's supposed to be for the copyright holder to decide you know, look at these things manually and then take them down if they go against what is going on. So, part two. Anyone can see that there's a lot of copyrighted content on the internet. And for the most part, when you have quote-unquote copyrighted content, you might be using this in a lot of different ways. Some people use it through um, discussion and discourse on movies, discussion and discourse on music but all of that is pretty much gone away because there's a monetary incentive to hold on to a copyright and for the most part the recording industry keeps on to those monetary incentives and nobody likes the content id system because now with so many matches they really can't play the music that they want to they can't do the things that they want to need to or desire now Another myth that people are going into is by saying that infringing content is illegal, quote unquote. But the thing is, if I have video that I'm playing about a game that I have, there is nothing saying that that content, while infringing, is illegal. Or if you say buy, you know, a book from a pawn shop, somehow that is depriving the rights of anybody that would own the book because it's uh, because of the content or let's say if you want to look at an nfl game without all of the blackouts going on the thing is if you look at it from an quote unquote illegal stream or an alternative stream which is a better word for it that's not really 
called illegal. It's just you're going through it in an unauthorized manner. This is something that has been big in books for like decades. But with the digital era, there seems to be a lot more of a crackdown on unauthorized um, networks. And that's a problem. Now, part four, services filter for other online illegal content so they can filter for infringement. Now, this is basically a logical flaw. If you can filter out Harry Potter books, you can uh, filter out Harry Potter reviews, book reports, or anything of that nature just for looking at unauthorized Harry Potter. Now, this has a problem on, say, fanfiction.net where if you're trying to create recreate a Harry Potter book and put it in your own fashion, your own words, maybe Hermione and Harry um, get together in your own fantasy. That's something that could be taken down with the DMCA at this current time, and I'll get more into that. Now, another thing that we heard about was that the DMCA compliance should be mandatory in some way, shape, or form. Now, with this mandatory thing, what has basically happened is that SOPA is being rebranded. When I'm talking about rebranding, we're looking at Section 512 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which is known as the Notice and Takedown Provision. Now, this is the safe harbor provisions where service providers basically aren't held liable for any infringement done by their users. Um, when we first got the DMCA, Verizon was very, very um, intent on this and they lobbied heavily for it because that would protect them. And nowadays, Google uses it. And while Verizon has recently lost their um, court battle, that's something totally different in regards to this. The notice and takedown provision, what the Motion Picture Association wants to do is to have it be a notice and stay down position, uh, stay down. In other words, if you have any video that they want to say is infringing, what they want to do is take that away from you. They want to sit here and make it so your video does not go on it onto the internet. Basically, this is to shut down the internet and for all intents and purposes, blame Google if your video is not is on their site for whatever reason and I guess complain even more to other people now the main ones pushing this while their names don't really matter I personally believe it's a systemic problem but Judy Chu and Tom Marino want to push and endorse this notice and stay down concept what that means is that they want this technology some kind of magic button to sit here and prevent piracy this ignores what piracy has been for all intents and purposes let's talk about piracy for just one moment when anybody talks about piracy in any way shape or form what they're talking about is say people are finding interesting things on the internet and when they have no access to legal alternatives when they have no access from Hollywood or Hollywood has really crappy alternatives and the pirates have better ones, that's pretty much piracy. Copyright infringement, it doesn't really matter. Nobody really uses copyright for anything. Not even the Motion Picture Association after the first five years. In five years, the entire market for movies has changed considerably. Just right now, we have a lot of people that go to superhero movies, but think about five years ago when we didn't have Iron Man, we didn't have Avengers, we didn't have those big things, and maybe we have a superhero um, exhaustion pretty soon, but right now the market is in for superheroes because there's a lot of quote-unquote nerds and geeks that want to sit here and enjoy Captain America Part 3 or you know Iron Man part four whenever it comes out but that's just it in terms of the DMCA instead of putting out and producing more movies and putting them on a legal service that everybody enjoys because ultraviolet absolutely sucks or Hulu they keep continuing to kill that service or trying to kill Netflix what Hollywood has basically been doing is trying to control the technology industry instead of allowing them to do things that would make them a lot of lot more money. So they want to have this notice and stay down 
decision that basically tries to push us back into the 1980s. It blocks licensed users, license uses, and fair use in no way, shape, or form. Now, quick lesson about fair use, that is section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Code. For all intents and purposes, I say that is public rights. And then with section 106, I say that is corporate rights. The reason that I say it like that is that everything in section 106 allows us to basically tells us that copyright does X, Y, Z for a corporation. But when you get into a judge's courtroom, that's when section 107 is basically being used. Now, what this does is effectively kill off small businesses. The next Google, which is, say, Hitbox or um, Bitvid or some other smaller companies, will not be able to have this kind of start startup because they're going to have this huge barrier to industry or uh, entry. What they have to do is they have to build a 50 or $60 million content ID system, which is really 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 bad what the content id system does is say here's a possible match we're gonna let you just see they give the publishers a lot of power when they give them a lot of power what happens it gets abused no matter what happens there is not this is no way in no way a simple fingerprinting system and it's be not even close to accurate it does a lot of things it causes a lot more problems than it solves by saying that everybody has content that can be pulled, strikes on their account, etc., etc., etc. Now what people want or what Hollywood basically wants with this is more power and control. Now, I've given you a few names here, but here's the problem. It's the same story over and over and over again. This is the business model that Hollywood has wanted for the last 50 years. Jack Valenti was pushing this. He was pushing for pir uh, to stamp down on piracy. And no one has stopped this. This is the money in politics. It's being used to buy off these people. We have an absolute systemic problem here. We have a loss of rights. We have a loss of rights in a considerable manner. And the problem is that this process stops the smaller businesses, the entrepreneurs that can actually make the Internet a lot more fruitful and a lot more powerful and possibly have a lot more competition. So what can we do to sit here and change the DMTA? Well, the fact of the matter is, if we want to change the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, we're going to have to sit here and understand that we've gotten this signal. This signal says exactly what the Motion Picture Association of America wants. They want to sit here and destroy the internet in any way, shape, or form. They couldn't do it with SOPA. They can't do it with the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement at this current point in time. That's why they're going to use this smaller way, and it is up to us, the people, the public, because of our rights in one section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Code, we have to be the ones that have to fight for a lot stronger fair use, which is something that we have lost, not only through the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, but for every last type of problem that has been going on for the last 30 years. We've had 15 changes to the Copyright Code. 15. It no longer progresses the arts and sciences. It is a form of censorship, a form of voluntary censorship. Yes, there is government censorship. But at this current point in time, this government-granted monopoly is being used by private actors to destroy the Internet for their public gain. This is something that we can change. This is something that we can do on the local level as well as on the national level. In terms of the local level, some things that we could possibly do, we can possibly make it so that Hollywood has to work harder to sit here and push those claims through and put and fight against YouTube and possibly split up their fronts. There's plenty of ways to do that, and I'll do that in my broadband video where I talk about such a thing. 
other ways to sit here and commit to a stronger internet is to get involved and look at the Digital Millennium copyright hearing and what these people have been saying. Yes, it is three hours. I've read, I've watched a lot. I can't watch all of it at this current point in time. Possibly I'll do a follow-up to sit here and say exactly what has been going on. But for the time being, these are problems that we need to fix. We, as in the public, we need to sit here and stand up for our rights and say enough is enough. There are no more corporate rights that are to be needed. If the Copyright Alliance can sit here and attack ChillingEffects.org for basically having public accountability for the DMCA being used inappropriately, it is time to change this system. We no longer need copyright if it is going to be used for private censorship. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.